Hi everyone, how's it going? Tim here, and uh, this is another live stream for uh, BXJS, a weekly show, or at least, you know, I try it to be weekly, uh, where I talk about doing things with JavaScript. And my cat's still going crazy, so if you have um, strange background noises, this is my cat's. Right, so today I want to talk about uh, testing because a lot of you guys asked for it. And um, we're gonna do, I actually don't need that project anymore. So um, we're gonna do um, something, something interesting, I guess. Uh, I mean, the plan is basically to talk about what is unit testing, what is integration testing, what is end to end testing, how to do all of that on a very basic level uh, in Node.js and JavaScript and um, then maybe go a bit into what is test-driven development and how to apply it and uh, should you apply it and what are the other uh, methodics out there essentially, right? Okay, so I'm gonna uh, create uh, intro testing, uh, let's call it this way. And I need the git repo here. And um, I guess I'm gonna do npm init minus y right away because why the hell not? Okay, so we are gonna develop a simple Node.js application uh, where we're gonna test, um, we're basically it's gonna do something and we're gonna create some unit tests, we're gonna create some integration tests and we're gonna do some end-to-end -end testing, right? So um, let's start by making an app. So what I'm thinking is that you typically have a bunch of stuff that you can test, right? There can be like, Command line utilities, there can be uh, network requests, there can be external modules, and so on and so forth. So uh, I would like to show you as much as possible from that perspective. So let's, let's think about it. Let's think, so what can we create so that it incorporates all of those things? Mm, let's say we can create a command line utility that will make some sort of um, HTTP request, display information to user, ask him a question, and then open something in a browser, right? Uh, hey, Wise, how's it going? Hey, yours truly greed. Um, just getting started, so just thinking of what should I write for the today's stream, and uh, yeah, yeah, that goes. Um, so yeah, basically, let's, let's go with that. So we're gonna query some URI, we're gonna show it to user and we're gonna um, then, I don't know, open a browser maybe, right? So uh, let me, yeah, I guess we just need index index.js. It's gonna be very simple. Um, so what we're gonna need is yarn at node on node fetch. Maybe that access point is better. Come on, pick it up. On Twitch, I know you should work now. All right, that looks better at least. Can you guys see me? Everything okay now? No problems? Okay, cool. Uh, so we're live again. Thank you for um, yeah, thank you for your patience and sorry about that. I think my rotor is acting up again. I have to send it back to the ISP because it's been a pain in the ass. Like those routers are a bit of a garbage. Right, okay, let's see. You know what? I'm just gonna go to Steam and let's take something from Steam. Uh, they don't really have any API, but they do have a lot of like JSON stuff that they send around. So we can uh, maybe take the community market and um, track the price of something. Um, yeah, let's track the price of this Gamescom Invitational crate, which is insane. You could have got that for free in the game. Now you can sell it for seven bucks. <laughs> Hell if I know how that works. Uh, video games, yes, okay. Uh, thank you, I don't want highlights. I don't want the console here. And if we refresh it, I think it does some uh, XHR request here. Or maybe it doesn't actually. Let's see, um, so this contains, does it actually contain information? that we need um, price, price history. Okay, so this does some JS, uh, there should be some, ah, there you go, okay. So here's the data and it is within the JavaScript, right? Okay, so we can actually parse this RG context thing. And uh, yeah, sure, why not? Let's take this URL 
const base realm. Um, obviously, we don't need view source here, so we're gonna go so with uh, a bit of parsing. Const main. So I'm just gonna say that we have a main app. So we start with a very simple implementation, which will just uh, do something. So const result is gonna be fetch base URL uh, text, right? So we're gonna get text from it and then console log result. Um, if we run that right now, uh, right, okay, I am an idiot, I have to await that. And there we go. Okay, so we have that thing. Now we need um, to parse out where's the price section? Mount, original, color, blah, blah, blah. Name, um, restriction, marketable. Uh, publisher fee percent, publisher fee. That's not what I want. Do I really have to take it out of, of the... Um, of the whole array of things, really, really Wolf, is that how you do things? This is kind of crazy. Wait, no, they do some requests there, right? So XHR, there you go. Activity, div, market, spawn. Okay, this is some order. What is this? Strings, this is some interpretation. Price overview, that's what we want. There you go, nice and easy API. This is what I wanna see. Cool, Um. yeah. I mean, Steam is designed in horrendous ways and I have no idea. I mean, I guess it's because it's a legacy software. So um, yeah, currency three, yeah, okay, cool. So theoretically, if we do that, we should get a nice JSON object with prices, right? And um, so what I wanna do, we wanna render that to user somehow and uh, to make it nicer, let's go for, so I can, no. Not close that. Let's say we'll have on user URL. Oh, come on. Oh, for real. Come on. What the heck? One more time. Hopefully this time around it works at least enough for me to finish the damn thing. Okay, I can see that I'm live indeed now. Um, can you guys see my stream? It work right now? Refresh this bit. Um, come on. Okay, I can see this stream health as well now. So I'm gonna do it this way. Yeah, the bitrate is all over the place. I'm not sure why what's, what's up with my streaming quality today okay uh can you guys see the stream everything is okay or to tell me let me know that it actually works and i'm not just talking to myself here going on in this what uh okay all right so it works okay good um then let us continue. So we will have a base URL that will be the, I guess it's better to call data URL, uh, which will contain the data. Then we'll have the user URL, which will be opened for user when he requests it. And uh, because we wanna be nice, we're gonna use, uh, was it? Basically colors. There was a package for coloring chalk, right? Um, are not chalk we're gonna make it fancy and we're gonna color it real nice okay on chalk wire uh, chalk okay and we're gonna say that um, some invitational crate console log uh, to right now um, then be a bit too scary. So, um, no, wait, there was front lowercase. There we go. Gamescom invitational crate costs. And uh, we got what? An index lower price. There's going to be result lower price. And then results. Da, 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 medium price. 
um yeah i guess we can just do it like this right so lower lowest price uh just to format it nicely median me, me price uh, da, 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 um yeah here and then we can what say volume yeah volume result volume right so that we have a slightly nicer output so if we run it now we should see that right okay and now we wrap that in chalk and make it and we can say chalk uh green over here for example say chalk blue over here say chalk uh no wait what was green red and a red is two maybe yellow maybe yeah yellow why not volume so we have a uh, nice colors here there we go why is median price I mean, I guess the median price is not for now, but for uh, in general for it, right? Okay, so, and then um, let's do this and say, calc bolt. So we highlight the name of the item, right? And uh, to uh, stress the, to stress the, uh, values say chalk was like something like was it gray or um gray? Yeah, yes maybe yellow bright bright uh yeah i guess yeah man let's try with gray why not let's see it work okay stream seems to be going fine this time around let's hope it's we can finish it okay that seems to be okay I can do this copy paste this stuff here. So there we go. Okay, nice. So now we have this thing, which basically queries the API and shows us something in a console. So um, I mean, theoretically, we can just say um, that it's gonna be a binary and then execute it um, as a binary, but you know, whatever. Use it like this for now. Um, now let's make it a bit more complicated, right? So let's add add inquirer so uh for those of you who doesn't know uh inquirer is the thing that allows you to um ask questions whoops close the wrong tab uh no that's not what i want i want inquire js please thank you very much uh so yeah it's a basically as it says a collection of common interactive command line uh user interface tools or user interfaces i guess and uh, we are gonna use it to ask user a question. In this case, we are gonna say uh, that hey, um, so it's gonna be prompts. Um, gonna put them over here. Uh, await const answer so it, it uses promises so it's very handy to use with um, the sync await right and uh, in this case we want to know um, whether the user wants to see the web page for example right so yes no uh, choice there's a choice type there you go okay so we have the type info confirm right confirm there's a an example for the confirm thing no no example for confirm type confirm yes that is what i want okay let's start with um type firm what else do we need to provide um i'm constantly forgetting what you need to pass to it so just end up um uh, going to logs again and again okay so name is the name of the variable um that we get back so we call it open browser Message is what the user is gonna see. Uh, do you want to open the page in browser? Uh, right, default is gonna be false, right? Because we don't wanna do it by default. And then actually we can just destruct this to open browser. If open browser, console log 
to open browser. So if I run it theoretically, uh, no, that's not what I wanted, whatever. So it should ask us yes, no. And if I say yes, okay, we now see that, it, okay, we now open it in the browser. Uh, and uh, what we want to do now is use something like open, I guess. Uh, yeah, okay, that's a JS JavaScript, please. There we go. From the uh, Majestic Syndrasaurus. I hope I do not butcher his name because he does a lot of amazing open source work. We're gonna we're gonna use this. Oops. Open. Nah, come on. Open package. Open uh, to just open that URL. There we go. And we're gonna open our user URL. Right, so if I execute our script again and say I want to open it, we should actually get a browser. Um, I guess, yeah, it opened it over here. There you go. Okay, so it works as intended. Now, um, this is our app, right? So how do you go about testing it? Uh, first of all, this is not really a command line thing. So uh, it's like we don't really have any parameters. So maybe let's make it... Um, make it a bit I mean you you have you would have to pass in like the app ID and the gamescom and the uh, market hash name but maybe that's a good thing so we can make it a bit more complicated right so got this thing and uh, if we look at the market here all of those things have those two parameters uh, one of them is like the app ID and the other one is the name of the thing that we we'll want to look at right um, so what we're going to do is we are going to use something like yargs, uh, which is the argument parser and uh, yargs and uh, turn it into a proper um, proper uh, executable, right? So we, we will copy that bit. We'll say that this is our uh, so it has this user being end of node so that it says it's a node script. We get the argv um, thing from yargs and we're going to use it to actually. Uh, da, 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 so we don't really need commands. I guess. Uh, so yeah, in this case, we only need two parameters, right? So um, we might not even need the main function, so it can be just self-wrapped, self-executing. Uh, yep, there you go. Okay, so first of all, uh, const, we were gonna have ID and we're gonna have name, right? Okay, and then we're gonna say that data URL is gonna be generated from ID and name and it's gonna use the this thing. Uh, so we're gonna, gonna split it into two lines so that it's a bit easier to understand. So in this case, um, this is gonna be code URI component name, and this is gonna be uh, ID, we don't really need to encode it, there you go. In this case, it's again, it's gonna be ID name. Da, 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 da. Uh, well, yeah, could have made it a proper template. So, and Code or a component name gonna be okay, and then we generate. So this should be actually a functions, right? So we say generate data URL and generate user URL. Say data URL is gonna be data URL name. User URL going to be generate user URL, but we don't actually want to generate it here, right? So we want to generate only over here. If user says, hey, I actually want to see that stuff. Um, and now we can say that we can chmod plus x index.js. And if we just do index.js right now, it should start working, right? So undefined, undefined. Array. Yeah, of course, because we did not provide um, ID, which in this case would be uh, let's say stuff right and name is um right let's okay there you go so now it works as intended right 
And we can actually use it for a bunch of uh, various items, not just one that is hard coded. Now, um, that is the way it's done now is not testable, right? Because it just executes right away and it's gonna be very hard to actually test the damn thing. So how do we do that um, in a testable manner? Well, we have to separate that uh, command that we do in a separate file. And Yargs, for example, provides uh, an option for that. Um, there was an example somewhere. They had the doc somewhere explaining how to parse, uh, how to basically put the commands in uh, different files. Uh, command action frame, command module, there you go. So we need to create a command module, which is gonna be, um, let's call it all main JS, right? Gonna be very simple. Um, so in this case, we don't need all of that stuff here. We're just gonna go have it here. And uh, in this case, yeah, okay, I guess that idea. So let's not do that yet. Uh, so this is the module, right? So we have, we have commands, which is um, gonna be star. So we were, we're gonna react on everything. Uh, get prices for given uh, app ID and item name. Uh, builder is going to be ID defaults. We can even use defaults here. So we can say that default ID is this. The default name is this. We can actually, you know what? We need to say uppercase, right? Because it should be uppercase as far as I understand valve because it's. Okay. Uh, and then we have our handler, which gets in the argv thing which in our case, we can actually just distract into ID and name right away. And uh, this is where our logic comes in, right? So now we have actually a function that is should be a sync, by the way, otherwise, it's going to screw up everything. There you go. So now we have a function that we can throw into tests and make sure that it actually works. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a second. Right, so we got builder, we got the handler, and uh, it's a main, and now we have to actually yargs command. So this is gonna be yargs, right? And we need the main app. So we say require uh, main help rb. There you go. Okay, so theoretically, if I now uh, do yes. And it's to uppercase of undefined. Oh, damn. Name. Name, ready to go. And now we should get, yeah, there you go. So it works, right? And if I say yes, it theoretically should open it, but for some reason doesn't switch the focus right now. Um, probably open has, um, probably it has like shift focus or something. From incognito target options. No, it doesn't, well, whatever. So the thing is that it does what we want. So we're all good, right? Now, uh, let me get status. And why doesn't it close everything? That's a very good question. Ah, I guess because open uh, opens the app as a child process. So it basically waits for it to finish, which is not what we want. I think wait false. Yeah, so we can pass in false and theoretically that way I uh, know I need index and yes and it finishes right and now we get our tab opens properly okay good so um get ignore node modules right get adds get adds everything yes git commit basic the app so we created the app right it took us well, some time, but hey, now we have the application. Stream seems to be going good so far. So no more breaks. That is great. Hopefully it will continue like this. Now we actually need to test it, right? So um, I'm going to use just for testing. Uh, it's It doesn't really matter which framework you use. There's like a ton of them starting from uh, full-fledged ones that have everything in them like Jest and... Uh, Mocha, for example, right? 
I'm still gonna name it Mocha because there, <laughs> there were guys in, in my YouTube comments who was like, hey, it's not Mocha, it's Mocha. I know it's Mocha, but I do used to naming it Mocha, uh, Mocha just for, you know, for, for fun of it. And uh, I'm, I'm still subconsciously name it Mocha anyway. <laughs> So you have to bear with me. Uh, yeah, so like Mocha is one of probably the popular ones. It has been everywhere. Um, it does a lot of things. So it has the assertion library. It has the test description and everything and a lot of things. It works with promises. It's pretty good. Jest is a framework from um, Facebook guys. Ah, hey, Matrix. <laughs> so you are watching me. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, so, you know, I'm just, I'm terrible at, at names anyway, and English is not my first language, so I screw up a lot of things. But yes, some of them I do intentionally. Uh, right, so uh, Mocha is great. Uh, Jest is a, a rising star, I guess. So it's a, it's been, uh, it's a framework for testing built by guys at Facebook. And in the very first versions, it was pretty damn terrible it was slow and there was really no reason to switch to it from mocha or just about anything else right now it has a lot of really cool features and it's damn fast it's actually way faster than everything else i've used so i switched i mean at least i've started switching most of my things to it uh just because it's you know it's a pleasure to work with and there are some really cool um tools like additional tools around it and in ecosystem and it has an amazing snapshot testing which is helpful for testing uh like uh command line interfaces or any interfaces because you, you could just yeah let me try that again you can just do a snapshot of a result and then compare them automatically which is in my book really cool okay um in, a, in addition to those full-fledged um things there are um, as well lighter versions uh lighter testing frameworks like say no tap, which is the tap, which is, um, how do you, there was like testing access protocol or something. Tab programming, uh, no, not task-based asynchronous pattern. There was test anything protocol, that's how it's called. So this is um, basically a protocol uh, to communicate between unit tests and test harness. And there is a tab based testers for just about any language out there. And no tap is pretty great. I mean, it's like, you know, it's very straightforward. It is very simple, very easy to set up. It provides test coverage and everything. And uh, I mean, it's not bad. So I, I used to use tap everywhere, but now switch to Jest. There is uh, no tape from uh, Substack, which is uh, sort of a bit more um, advanced top i guess so it's a bit more complicated it has a bit more features but it's also works pretty good and then there's ava which is again top based thing but it runs stuff in parallel which i know uh, also quite a lot of people uh, like and use but we're gonna stick to jest for today i mean it's you know there's no real like winner or loser in the year so you just have to go ahead and try and figure out which one you like more for yourself once again this has been my like uh, for switch of, of testing things. So at first I started with Mocha, then I try, then I used uh, tab for some reason, uh, for some time, not for some reason. And now I'm switching to Jest just because it has more features and like cooler things that I use. And, you know, in, in other frameworks, I basically do that myself like manually, which is annoying. And here I can just do it on a basis of framework. So I'm gonna go with Jest. Um, so the way the Jest works is that you could create a file called uh, anything.test.js. So there's gonna be a test file. And uh, in test, you just say Jest. That's all you need to do. So add Jest as dependency, test uh, script is Jest. And then you have files uh, called .test.js anywhere. They can be anywhere in your folder structure. So Jest will find them on its own. And uh, then you just write test, right? So uh, one thing you want to do is to say that this is ESLint and Jest. Uh, if you want to do that, then ESLint will complain about words like describe. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. VS Code auto import feature sometimes does strange things. Um, okay, main function, right? So we take our first uh, test suite 
and describe it. So describe is a scoping thing. Basically, we create a scope where we will test our main function. Uh, this is true for most uh, unit testing packages. We don't really need to do that. We can uh, just leave it out here because we have very simple case. We don't really need this case. So you can have more than one describe and file, I think. But we're going to have, you know, describe. So and then we're going to write test. So you write a test. Test is a function. It first takes a name of the test and then it takes um, a function that can be asynchronous that does something. So in our case, we have this uh, main thing, right? So we are going to import uh, see handler from main, right? So we take this function over here. This function is asynchronous, it takes ID and name, and then it does something. Um, so here's the problem. So first of all, uh, we can we can we can just test gets data gets default data, let's call it this, right? So um, we do const result equal await handler. So basically what tests are supposed to do is uh, make sure that your function work as you expect it to work, right? So in this case, we want to call the handler and we want to uh, say expect result to match snapshot. Like, okay, let's not touch snapshots for now. Let's say to equal. And then in this case, uh, it doesn't actually return anything. So that's actually wrong, but we can, we can, no, we, we don't really want to return because it's a user thing, right? So um, what we can do in this case is we can split it into sub functions, right? So we can say, okay, we're going to separate that from, uh, from the main thing or it's get data. And uh, it's going to be sync turn result. And it's going to pass in ID and name. Okay, so, you know, we, we've noticed that it's not possible right now with our knowledge to test this whole handler because it doesn't return anything. So we're gonna simplify it and say, okay, const get data and then exports get, uh, get data. And then we're gonna say uh, result is gonna be, whoops, const await get data the name, right? So Theoretically, if I now run index.js, we should see exactly the same result. But now we can actually import um, get data, right? So we can actually say get uh, the, no, get data, oh, come on. Am I so bad at this? Get data, there you go. To equal, and our data in this case is, I mean, in this point, we just do this. And if I say npm test, we're going to see that it's going to fail, obviously, right? Because it's not, it's not equal. You know, ah, right, because we need to pass in ID um, and name here explicitly because there are no defaults. I'm going to say const, uh, let's put it so we have those defaults. I'm going to copy that, say, games, uh, game, com great we're going to say that is an object that has an id right and it has a name come on go oh, okay so we're going to say com create right so we run test again we're going to see that it fails because it expects uh so basically we're matching it to a normal object but um, yeah, you you have the default. I mean, plugin Jest is also fine, but you have the default ESLint environment for it. So it's like, uh, I guess plugin does a bit more than default environment, but default environment just defines those, you know, test, expect, and everything so that you don't have to care about that. Right. So it failed, obviously, because we, we are comparing it to wrong thing, right? So I'm going to remove those pluses over here and then press fire. That is many brackets there you go this is why i love um prettier okay so if i run test now it's gonna fail as well and you know why it's gonna fail because lowest price changes right so we actually every time we're gonna run test we're gonna get a different result so in this case we cannot 
reliably test the function with a live server because it's going to fail at some point even if you know even if the data is not as volatile as in this case it's going to fail at some point because the server is going to return a different different volume or different median price or different data essentially right so how do we deal with that and actually i need to all done over here how do you deal with that well uh we have to we have to fake the response from the server right so we have to say okay when the client is going to request this url we don't want it, it to go to the real server but we want it to actually be handled by our server and we want it to be faked um luckily for us there is a tool called knock which i will add to dev so we're going to call knock yes uh, and knock allows you to override nodes http request there are similar tools for um, browsers client-side testing um, so basically it allows you to override um, http request and redirect any request to servers wherever you want so this is going to be our um, devs or our packages i guess packages and have m packages we're going to have knock and here in this suit uh before all so you can say that before all tests we want to actually do something in this case we want to say that hey we're going to say uh, it's going to be let's call it uh going to be the server right um and i'm gonna call it that's team community right so let's say store it here because we need to clean it up afterwards otherwise it's going to interfere with other tests so in this case we are going to have this you no, this is not the complete url so we're going to have this bit mm. okay it's going to be url uh, so it's going to start with slash and then we're gonna copy this part. Uh, I'm gonna split it, I guess, into two parts again. So this is gonna be Gamescom create ID. Uh, what you underscore that? Uh, ah, yeah, okay. So, okay, yes. And then this is gonna be Gamescom create name to uppercase. I mean, it's already uppercase, so I guess it doesn't matter. There you go. So, and then we're going to get the URL here. We're running get request, right? So we're going to get it. Uh, we're going to reply with 200. And then we're going to reply with this. So this is this is our response, right? And uh, after, uh, like, okay, if I have to say after all, we actually want uh, Steam community to, there is a cleanup function um this is expectations da, 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 da. wait there was a cleanup function for it but i don't remember how it's called uh was it close no oh uh, come on move okay tear down how do i do a tear down come on knock tell me Wow, oh, unmocked uh no expectations done clean persist active mocks is active um active mocks pending mocks persist no there's not clean all oh, okay Let's say you know right? remove it there you go okay so in theory if we run and if i didn't screw anything up and if we run npm test now it should pass there you go so now we actually uh compare it to the correct data and we always know that the data will match um, hey, Finite TV. So we started doing a command line application and testing it with Jest. And I just got to the part where I faked the HTTP request and now doing the test that actually passes. And now I'm about to show the cool feature of um, Jest, which is snapshots. So thing is that we know that this data will always be the same, right? So unless we screwed up somewhere in our implementation, it's going to remain the same. So in this case, if I don't really need to compare it manually, I can just say to match snapshot. And once we run it, Jest will actually generate snapshot, which we can manually inspect. And as you can see here, the snapshot looks exactly like our data. And uh, every time I rerun, the snapshot will get compared to the result. So if I say, if we take this function, 
fetch and then uh, say return result and then say what well, what do we have there um, other false so if we modify something and the snapshots doesn't match just will actually start failing so this is one of the like it may be not very useful for comparing you know api requests and objects and stuff but when we're talking about like uh react testing this is like amazing Okay, so we, we tested our data fetching function, right? And now we have a nice test that actually gets it. So now we need to test the handler which actually renders it. So uh, this is actually, by the way, what you would call a unit test, right? We have our one function, one small unit that does something very specific. We have our unit test that makes sure that this one unit, which is a function in this case, does what it is supposed to do. Um, unit is not necessarily a function. It can be as well like a module uh, or you know a component, but it usually is one uh, relatively small thing, right? So not the whole application. So now we're getting to the integration test, right? So we actually want to know that when we run this handler, it does what it's supposed to do to a user. So um, we're gonna say so renders correct uh, data to a user, right? A sync function again because we're gonna run our uh, our thing. So we don't really need result here. So we're gonna say await uh, handler. After that, we're gonna say done. So the thing is, uh, basically, this this test should pass in theory, right? Because we just execute the handler and then we run test. The thing is, it's not gonna execute. It's gonna fail, right? So first of all, because I forgot to pass everything because I'm a dumbass, but um, do this. Uh, but it's not gonna it's actually not gonna finish right it's gonna fail so it's gonna fail because uh first of all it's gonna do a fetch request uh and there's no uh knock uh mapping for it so we're gonna say um there was a twice i think is it like this i always forget where you should put it there you go so as you can see it actually executes it we see the output but the problem is it's gonna time out, right? Because there is a question from uh, inquirer, which requires user input. So users should actually do something and our tests don't really do that, right? So obviously it's gonna fail. How do we deal with that? Well, we have to actually stop, um, stop an inquirer and fake this function response, right? So in this case, I mean, theoretically Jest does have some mocking capabilities, but stabbing is not very nice to do with it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Synon, another library for that, which is quite helpful. Um, so Synon allows you to stop just about everything and we're gonna use it to stop console log as well to make sure that the results are, uh, not to stop to spy on it actually, that the results are what you want to be. Uh, let me open the website, I guess, uh, get started. Yes, so we install the Synon and uh, yes, so we, we have this Synon spy function. Uh, which we can, uh, we, we will apply later. So first let's make it work, right? So see, they have a stab example somewhere. There you go. Um, there was a way, so, okay. First of all, let's const, uh, come on, const, xenon, wire, xenon, right? And in this case, we're gonna say xenon uh, stab, uh, what was it? By forgetting things, wait a second. In wire, say non stop. Um, I think it was an official inquire docs. You testing P programs. Uh, what was it? So you get blah 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 blah. No, that's not what I want. Um, a question from is finally whatever. Uh, have seen on here yes it does okay so there you go okay seen on stuff okay so it, it just doesn't provide you with a proper const uh wire stub so we get this and then basically what we want is we want it to resolve uh to return a promise right so we actually or to return a value in this case we don't really care about the promise so uh, in this case, say we return uh, so we return an object which says open browser false, right? So this is the simplest version. We we need to const 
inquirer, require inquirer. So this will actually replace um, inquire stop um, store, I think it was. Yeah, so we restore inquirer. Yes, there you go. So stop the reply from user. Cute main logic. Right, so theoretically right now, if I run npm test, we should see the test pass because we just faked the response from user and I uh, has been removed see documentation. <gasps> no. Okay, that is not very good. Um, where's the uh, how to docs? Okay. Stops, there you go. Okay, so when do you stop? Stop throws, uh, how do I stop object method? Been removed object method calls fake ah okay so it's just slightly different api okay scared that it was in calls fake it was been completely removed and there's no way to do that anymore okay there you go so now it passes and we can actually see the output which is you know comes from console log so um in this case what we did is we faked the response from a user we run the logic and then we restored the inquirer just to make sure it doesn't messes with any other tests right now, um, we have to validate that this response is actually valid, right? So we have to know that the what the function outputted is true. Uh, we can use the snapshot to do that again. But to do that, we have to actually spy on a console, right? So um, tap into console log function. So we say synon um, spy, I believe it has a by uh here's the spy method stop no this oh all right this is stops api uh documentation come on i want spies and uh spy yeah there you go see on spy so we say const console spy a spy for console log method right and uh i believe um, this is actually all we want. So we spy on object method and then we can use this spy thing to check what has been called with. So um, I'm just gonna do console log. First of all, I'm gonna say just uh, remove console spy. Spy restore, I believe again, yes, console log. Because if we console log with console spy enabled, the results will basically will log itself, right? Okay, and uh, it is, uh, yeah, okay, there's a lot of stuff in there. So it actually logs, it's, it's an object, right? I think we need args or something. Function for me. args, yes, this is what we want, args. Go. If we execute it, we will see all the arguments that were used when called, uh, when the function will called. And if you look here, that is actually, so uh, those uh, slash u uh, blah, 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 m is the Unicode entries for the colors and, you know, highlighting and all that bold, not bold and everything. Uh, we could compare it manually once again. Uh, it's not a big deal to do that. And you can like clean the Unicode characters out of there, but it is way easier to just say that to match snapshot. Snapshot, there you go. Once again, when we run test, the first time obviously is gonna generate the snapshot. Uh, you do wanna generally go here and make sure that the snapshot looks correct. In this case, you know, it looks fine. If we rerun it, you will actually see that it's now passing, like both tests are now passing, right? So this is our first integration test, but we also need to test uh, opening browser, right? opens browser on user request. So once again, we're going to stop the inquirer, but in this case, we're going to say true. We're going to spy on a console, we're going to match the snapshot again. And the thing is, if we're going to run it now, we're, uh, first of all, it's not going to work because, uh, right, first of all, the, um, it's to be times three right now, right? Um, it's not going to work because it's it's really going to call this function and we're going to have it open in the browser, but there's no way to know that it's actually being called, right? So what we need to do is we need to mock it. 
So in this case, we're going to say, uh, first of all, say open require open, right? And then we're going to say just, uh, again, I guess we can make it top level because it doesn't matter. Just mock open. Oh, and I guess it makes more sense to uh, do it this way because we need mock open function. Right? So in this case, Jest will replace the whole open module with or open function in this case with a mock function that does nothing, but we can actually tap into and uh, figure out that, you know, um, validate output. Uh, so once again, we're going to validate output here and uh, make sure open was called. So this is what we need, right? So we say open, uh, expect open and handily for us, uh, just has to be called function that works on uh, mocks very well. So we can just run test here. There you go. So it's actually passing now. It is the get data method for some reason takes 72 seconds. I am not sure why. Um, that is a very good question. I mean, uh, we actually can maybe, or I wonder if before each, after each is going to work better. Maybe is it because of the knock setup? No, that's a uh, clean all is not a function. That's not. Okay, I guess in all. Yeah, okay. I mean, whatever. We actually right now it passes. For some reason the first test takes 17 milliseconds, which is like three times longer than the other tests. Not sure what's up with that. Uh, theoretically, it should not take that much, but uh, probably the setup of the knock. Also, you know, it shouldn't take that long, but whatever. It's not too much time. And uh, right now, if we, uh, if you would want to see, so normally you would want to see some coverage, right? Uh, to know how much, what what percentage of the code have you covered? And you know, luckily for us, this simple tests actually cover 100% of everything. So Git add and then uh, okay, you know what? Git coverage. We don't really need coverage here. Git ignore cover. So coverage information is optional. Is that something uh, you don't want to commit? Snapshots, on the other hand, is something you do want to have in your repository. And if they change, so if you actually modify the data, it adds uh, tests with at okay, I adjust tests. Right. So um, again, there might be the case when you need to change the snapshots, right? So if I test the, uh, the test data, it will actually start failing because the snapshots no longer match it, right? And uh, I believe um, there was, wait a second, just uh, where's the API? There is a command to regenerate the snapshots and I think uh, click options, it was minus U or something, update snapshot, uh, yeah, minus U. So we just say minus, minus, minus U and theoretically that should regenerate the snapshots. There you go. So we, we want to check the snapshot again, obviously. So in this case, value has changed and now the tests without U passes again, right? So uh, quite easy to modify if you need to do that. Uh, git reset hard. Okay. Um, so what else you can do? You can do end to end testing, right? So this is like, this is the unit tests, very, very small, very specific. This is integration tests that make sure that your thing is working all together, right? With user input and everything. And there are as well end to end tests, which is when you basically call your binary and make sure the output from the system perspective is correct. You can do that with Jest as well, but uh, it's like in this case, it doesn't make a lot of sense, um, but you know, um, it makes a lot of sense, for example, for complex systems like that has more than one component. So if we, if we, if we would have the data on our server here, you would wanna start a server somewhere, then use your CLI to access the data with the mock data, obviously, and then make sure that the output is correct. And that would be the end-to-end -end testing that would scaffold all of that, for example, in Docker containers, which uh, can be a bit tedious to set up, but can catch quite a lot of bugs. 
Um, now, I guess I will talk a bit about the coverage. So because, you know, I've, I've kind of touched the metrics and we added the coverage and now we have this 100% test coverage. So the thing is, you you like, I, I don't think it's necessarily to obsess over 100% coverage because 100% coverage does not guarantee your code being without bugs, right? Even if you test uh test cover all each and every line each and every if and else and so on and so forth doesn't mean there is somewhere not a sneaky bug that will screw you over at time there is there will be like at, at some point there will be and um there's no way to have more than 100 percent test coverage and there's no way to actually measure this so you will at some point be like okay you know this doesn't work so i have to add more tests so I would not obsess over it. I would like you. You do want to have integration tests for most of your use cases, right? So here we have the two integration tests that basically cover everything our app does. So in theory, we already need this because even if I remove that right now, we will have the um, we will have the test passing and we'll have hundred percent coverage. There you go because the same. Get data code is is gets called within this integration test, so we don't actually need to. Whoops, we don't actually need to test it separately, right? We do need to test separately if ah, come on, mouse. There you go. We do need to test separately if the browser is open, right? Or if it correctly not opens when you pass false. So those are kind of the things that you want to test um, in just about any app or library. You know, like what sort of the user stories is what you're looking. at. Okay, now let's talk about test driven development. So in this case, we were, um, we were writing code first and then covering it with tests. Test driven development is a different thing. So test driven development suggests that you would start with actually this, right? So you would have, you would have a test that would be would look like this, for example, right? So you have a server that has this URL applies to it with this data and your test should be matching uh, some snapshot or in this case maybe matching this data right and then you would go into the file main and write this function that will get the URL using ID and username fetch the test and and then make this test pass um, there there are basically people who find it way easier to think uh, from the test driven perspective, right? So you first write tests, you will like figure out in your head how it should work, what it should do, and then you write the code itself. Uh, for me, that feels a bit backwards. So I actually prefer to first write the code, make sure it does what I want, and then write the test for it to cover the basic use cases. Once again, I, I am not pushing for 100% test coverage because I know that it's not going to help anyway. So I, that might be the problem. Um, but it's basically, I would recommend trying it out for yourself both ways, test driven and just, you know, code first approach and see what works better for you. If test driven really helps you, then go for it by all means. It's like, if you can do it, it's great. If not, then there's nothing wrong with writing code first and then covering it with tests. Just make sure you write enough integration tests to actually cover all the cases. Okay, um, I guess I will just commit that and push it to, um, to the GitHub. And we are gonna wrap it up over here. I mean, it's been a nice on our stream with uh, some hiccups in the beginning, but uh, yeah. Okay, intro testing. Um, yeah, I probably should add a description here. Production to basic unit and integration testing just there you go um right yeah so while i'm pushing if you have any questions feel free to post them in the chat i'm looking there from time to time so i'm gonna answer them if not then well i'm gonna push that and i'm gonna wrap the stream up it commits add description i probably should add a uh, readme package yeah i guess i should add a readme as well um, i should probably i'm gonna be lazy and copy it from the other project because why the hell not okay so let's see 
Right? No, not blame. I don't need to blame anyone. That's all my fault anyway. Okay, project. Uh, testing with guest Sinon and uh, knock tutorial. Tutorial on testing with guest Sinon and knock. Looks like no questions so far. Um, action. Guest. Okay, I'm not sure that's going to be the name, but I'm going to leave it here for now. To, um, okay. That so this demonstration. Code using guest synon and knock. I'm gonna probably extend it a bit. I don't really need any related links in this case for now, at least. Yeah. Read me git file. And uh, now we can push it. And yes. Go and push or master. Could I mean we probably could have set up the CI for that, but that like a completely different topic, so I don't really want to go into that. Okay, um yeah, I guess that will be it for today. Uh looks like there's no questions there, so I am uh yeah, I'm gonna wrap it up here. Thank you for watching, and as usual, I see you next time. Bye.